Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this series of videos, we will try to understand how to build a text to SQL agent from scratch. In part one of this series, we will try to understand the high level architecture of the agentic workflow. In part two of this series, we will have a code walkthrough. So given any business question in natural language to a text to SQL agent, this agent will generate a SQL query that answers this question. We are going to build this text to SQL agent on top of eight different tables. However, we can extend the logic to any number of tables as per your need. So this will be a complete hands-on series. To get the most out of this series, you will need to know Python. You will also need to know some of the basics of LangGraph. If you are not aware of the LangGraph, I'll be attaching a playlist in the description. You can go through the playlist. So before getting into the agentic workflow, let's try to understand the schema details of different tables that, that will be part of our text to SQL agent. So all the tables that we are going to use are related to OList, which is the largest departmental store in Brazil. OList basically connects lots of small businesses to different customers across Brazil. Lots of sellers are able to sell their products through OList store and ship them directly to the customers using OList logistic partners. So now let's do a quick walkthrough of different tables that will be a part of our text to SQL agent. The first table is customer table. It has data related to individual customers like customer ID, location details of each customer. So now every order will have multiple products. There can be a lot of items related to each product. For example, let's assume we have a specific order which or with order ID one. In this order, assume there are two products. Customer has ordered two products in this order. So a customer ordered books, customer ordered pens, right? So every product has its own product ID. Book has its own product ID, pen has its own product ID. So maybe customer, let's say customer has ordered two books and three pens. So number of items of this product is two. Number of items of this product is three. So this is what will be there as a part of this table. You have order ID, which uniquely assigns individual, uh, I mean to say, which has a unique identifier to each order. It has a unique identifier to each product. And number of items of a product is nothing but number of items of each product within an order. This table also has seller ID, price of each item and free to value of each item. Uh, remember, this is not a price of whole product. Rather, it is price of every item of a product. And we also have free to value of an item, which is nothing but cost incurred by OList to transport this item to the customer. So the next important table that we have is order payments. It has data related to how the payments has been made for a particular order. So for every order, what is the total payment value that happened in a particular transaction? And what is the payment type, which means the payment has been made through credit card or debit card, etc. And customer has opted for a number of installments to pay for this specific order. Uh, we have a table related to order reviews. It has uh, data related to a review for every order. Given order ID, what is the review score? What are the review comments? What are the review? What is the review creation date? We also have a specific table related to orders. In this table, we have data related to order ID, customer ID that has ordered the specific order. What is the order status of this order? It can be delivered or it can be any other status as well. We have data related to order purchase date, order delivered date, order estimated date. So in our products table, we have data related to uh, product ID, which is a unique identifier for every product. We have product category in Brazilian language. And what are the product dimensions? That means what is the length of the product? What is the breadth of the product? What is the width of a product? So a sellers table has data related to sellers, like a unique identifier for every seller and the seller location. The last table that we have is product category translation. So if you remember in the products table, we have product category in Brazilian. So this specific table is basically a translation of product category name. It has two columns. First column is product category name in Brazilian and it's corresponding English translation. 
This is all about the schema details of each of the tables that are going to be part of our agent. So now uh, let's quickly go through the agentic workflow. So now this whole agentic workflow is powered by something called as knowledge base. Knowledge base is nothing but it has the metadata information of different tables. What is this metadata and how do we build this knowledge base? We will see in part two of the video. So now let's quickly look at the agentic workflow. In this text to SQL agent, there are three powerful agents. The first is the customer agent. We have orders agent and we have product agent. Customer's agent, customer agent is basically an expert in understanding uh, the data related to customers and sellers. It has lots of knowledge about customer table and sellers table. So what this agent does, this agent selects the right tables and right columns based on the user question from these two tables. Because this specific agent has details only related to these two tables only. When it comes to order agent, this is an expert in orders domain. So it has lots of knowledge related to these four tables. So given any user question to this orders agent, it will select the right tables. It will also select the right columns from these tables. Likewise, we have product agent, which is an expert in products table and product category translation table. Given any question routed to product agent, this agent selects the right table and right columns uh, to answer uh, a specific user question. Let me erase this. Right. So now the output of the specialized agents are relevant tables and columns that can answer the user question. So all this data is fed into a specific check called as a filter check. What it will do is for any user question, is there any need for us to add any filter to the SQL query? If it thinks like, no, there is no need for any filter, it will take this path and using all these details, all the relevant tables and columns from different agents, it will generate a SQL query. Once a SQL query is generated by query generator agent, the SQL query along with the user question is passed to the query validator which validates the query generated by the query generator. So if everything is fine, we will be ending our agentic workflow. So now let's go to this path. If the filter check thinks we need to filter some values uh, based on the user question, it will take this path. And now there is something called as fuzzy agent, which ex extracts the relevant values of filters. So now along with the relevant values of filters, and relevant tables and columns, all these details are passed to the query generator, which generates the SQL query. And then the SQL query is passed to query validator, and then we end our agentic workflow. As discussed, this complete agentic workflow is powered by this knowledge base. So now let's try to understand it more uh, with the help of a simple example. Uh, yeah, I think we have missed router agent. So uh, user question is directly routed to a router agent router agent directs the user question to different agents. Let's try to understand this with the help of a simple example. So now let's see this. So user has given a question, something like, give me a list of customers from Sao Paulo state that made at least one payment through credit card. This is the question given by the user. So now this question is routed to a router agent. The router agent understands that, that this request is related to customer's agent and order's agent. Only these two agents can solve the specific question. So now then the router routes the user question to both of these agents. It will route to customer agent, it will route to order's agent. It will not route to product agent because router knows that product agent cannot answer this user question. So now within each of these agents, we have two things. The agent will select the right table. It will also select the right columns from the tables it has selected. So for this user question, if it is passed to customer agent, so customer agent will give something like this as output. It will say that uh, to answer this question, uh, customer table is pretty important. Apart from, custo from customer table, 
customer ID column and customer state are very important to solve this question. Likewise, order agent will give something like this as output. It will say that to answer the user question, order table is very important and orders ID and customer ID columns from these orders table will help in solving this question. Likewise, it will also say that order payment table is important and order ID. And I think uh, there is one more column that is missing, which is called as the payment type. Let's add it. Payment type is also important to answer this question. So this will be the output of orders agent and this will be the output of a customer agent. So now uh, both of this information along with the user query is fed into a filter check. Now the filter check will understand that, yes, uh, I mean, just, I will need to filter some information. So because uh, the user question is, give me list of customers from Sao Paulo state. So we need to add a filter over here. We also need to add a filter. Uh, we need to add one more filter because it's very clear like we only want the details of the customers that made payment through credit card only. So filter needed check will say that yes, filter is needed. And now because the filter is needed, so now we are routed to the fuzzy agent, right? In the filter check, we say yes. Because it is a yes, we, we need to route it to the fuzzy agent. So now what the fuzzy agent will do is, fuzzy agent will say that on customer state, you need to have a filter which is called as customer state equal to SA. What is SA? SA represents Sao Paulo state. Though user has mentioned it as Sao Paulo state, but Sao Paulo value is not there in the customer state value. What is there? SA is there, which represents the Sao Paulo state. That's what the fuzzy agent will do. I think we missed something else over here. It will also say that uh, from order payments table, uh, we will need to filter we will need to filter for a payment type payment underscore type equal to credit card right this will be the output of the fuzzy agent so now along with this information along with the relevant tables and columns information along with the user query we club all this information and give it to sql generation agent so based on all this information, this specific agent will generate a SQL query. So now this SQL query that is generated by query generation agent, we give that to query validation agent that validates the SQL query generated by the SQL generator agent. So this is how our agentic workflow looks like. So in the next part of the series, we will try to understand how to build such an agent from scratch using LangGraph. So now let's try to understand a bit more about knowledge base. As I have told before, this complete agentic workflow is powered by knowledge base. So how do we prepare a knowledge base, right? So let's quickly see this. So what we do is uh, for every table, we write a one line description of a specific table. For example, if you consider sellers, sellers table, what this uh, table contains, it contains details about seller identifier and location. This is written manually. So likewise, for every table, we, like, we write a one line description manually. And then we extract some top, uh, not top, we'll extract some random five to six rows from this specific table. Both of this, we will give together to LLM to generate a description for the table. We will also ask the LLM to write a column description along with some sample values from this table. So uh, this is how we build a knowledge base. So knowledge base have two components. It has the table description for every table. It also have column description for every column within a table, along with some sample values in that column. This is how we build a knowledge base. Great, I think uh, pretty much that's it for this video. In next video, we'll dive into each of these components and see how this text to SQL agent works in practice. Thanks everyone. See you next video. Bye.